Me na Isa to smile sise and today share a network the new thing as today na January 6th we na a memorable day to every Sierra Leoneans and also the Melkwash Mission International the new thing today with the warm wood and an appetite as and they provide medical facilities for them. Hello, welcome to this interview. Your name is Udachibe. Good afternoon. My name is Pastor Faith Okrafo Smart, and me na the vision carrier of Melkosh Mission International, a charity um, where we create for empower, equip, and educate war survivors of the civil Sierra Leone's ten year civil war, war in Sierra Leone, and um, we they work with um, war amputees, war wounded war rape victims, war widows, war orphans and children of um, surviving amputees and we they help them through medical missions, educational sponsorship, university scholarships and we also they do nationwide food aid um, distribution during crisis and we project don't go nationwide, so we're a nationwide organization. And today, on January 6th, and we see some um, people them um, will be affected during the war. We go on to make you tell viewers them whose type of people them um, will you deal with right now. Okay, so of course, um, today, on January 6th, we, um, uh, um, we commemorate um, the day when I be the most memorable day in the history of the war, um, January 6th, uh, the day where uh, many amputees then become amputees, many people then we become wounded, women um, the way they rape, and so we, we they use this day for make we commemorate them in a positive way by doing medical missions for um, war amputees and war wounded and war rape victims and war widows. So um, today is the first day and we did one all throughout. In the next six weeks, we mission Godongo in different districts, replicated what we did do today. Okay. And as we, as this particular um, program, we did go on so, na free tongue. So what about um, the areas them, outside them, war wounded and also amputees they are so come out. We go on for make you tell with the specific areas them, outside you get them from. Okay, so the amputees then come out from western area, rural and urban. We get some we come out from Freetown, some come from number two. Um, we get amputees that we come from um, Grafton, Hastings, Jewe, Roquel, Waterloo 55, Waterloo Beguma, and Newton, where we service units today, who say we do the mission. So they come from nine different locations. So, what really prompts you for make you take up this assignment? Well, now, God, to be honest, it happened 17 years ago. I've been there in a conference for women, and the Lord talked to me in a scripture in the book of Micah. Four, six ways in that day said the Lord I will gather those the lame the afflicted and I will make them a remnant I'll make the outcasts a strong nation and so that was how it's a long story um, the following year after 2004 in 2005 the Lord um, tell me say, specifically now for war amputees as you be they talk about the reason we make you decide for take up this assignment 
Okay, so in 2005, the Lord, December 2005, the Lord said, it all year, the cries of the war amputees, them, and he said, it is sent me to them. He said, it all year, them cries, and it all ready for answer them. And at the time, I would work for um, London as a senior government officer, senior local government officer. And um, I can't begin come alone. Um, for four years, I, I juggling work and still being a pastor and studying at the work, and um, they do the mission. And then in 2011, I give up my job for do this full time because that's my vocation, that's my calling, that's my purpose, and that's God make a day in this world. And I am striving for the amputees. 365 days for me we give them a life of dignity dignity where we all deserve so that's the project so um we don't they do this the building where we do so right now it's a building a brand new building where they build where they house with educational sponsorship projects we get a, a resource center a computer and library room and then we get the church and then um, here, this is an uncompleted site, but it will be completed in the next 10 days. We go house the headquarters, this section, go house the headquarters for administrative purposes in Sierra Leone. And um, by the special grace of God, we projects don't go all over all the 22 cities in Sierra Leone, from Pujeon in the south, Moyamba, even Bonth, to Kailahun, Kabala, Kenema, um, Kono, Fadugu, um, Kambia, um, Usai again, I don't call Mabo, Kabumbuna, Kamakue, and of course Freetown, Bo, Tayama. Um, all over with Mission Dongo, and with the help, we get over 5,000 beneficiaries, and um, most especially. For the amputees, we do the health section because many of them don't die. Every year we lose them at a rapid rate, rapid, rapid rate. And unfortunately, even though the government of Sierra Leone say um, from 2011, there was a disability act with them passed, we say then we provide free medical for the amputees. It is non-existent. Even before 2011, the TRC state say um, then we provide free medical free education for the Peking them, free transport for the, for the amputees them, um, pension, they even talk say, any diamond with them fair in a salon, a percentage of that for go, for go provide a trust fund for war survivors and so that they go able for leave. Not one penny don't come to them. Even last year, the government of Sierra Leone and NAXA promise the amputees them, then, then call them Regina Safa, when I the director of that program, they, I talked to them from England. He said they get about $3 million where they don't receive from World Bank, where they go get amputees them stipends during the pandemic for help people in vulnerable groups. Then go, they interview them, then come, gov um, World Bank give um, government of Sierra Leone $3 million for help people in vulnerable groups during the COVID. They register, I talked to a lady, the director of NAXA, of that program, the Regina Safa. He promised me, say, then go help the amputees them, then get the amputees them all registered. Um, the amputees now receive the promise of getting monthly help. You know, so time and time again, Sierra Leone, they disappoint, they let down, they ignore, they reject the amputees. And the amputees, the war wounded, they are the constituents of Sierra Leone. They are citizens of Sierra Leone. They only use them where election one come. Each president they come say, we will come help the disabled people or people with disabilities. Empty promises. On a day like this, January 6th, you would have thought at least this day would be commemorated or something will be done. And it's not, not like Sierra Leone, they receive money for help amputees. But they line their pockets with that money. And now they give the amputees them. And day by day, the amputees, they were losing amputees on a rapid rate. So, um, now let me talk about this um, program where you did do NIASO for the amputees them. Now, only medical support you can give them today? Um, for today, yes. And then we also they do a cookout. They feed them because... 
um, some of them get for big before they eat. And so many of them, not even they eat, many of them get ulcers because of the uh, what's on ten and they are uh, barely one million they eat. So we make a we make a point of duty say we know we just can't give them medicines. We know we can't treat them because we're not only they um, can't just give medicine, we're actually treating them. We they do diabetic checks, high blood pressure te- checks, anti malarial check, we get the CHOs there where they do the consultation and then then prescribe the adequate medicine so we not just can't dish out medicines and then after that we they do the cookout for them or they provide them a proper decent meal where at least we know say after they don't take their medicine then get good food with it inside them belly and we do this all over the country but for january 18 we mark the 20th anniversary since the war done we get bigger plans where we go talk about closer to the time okay so waiting at the message we go out to all you don't say so well, I want everybody, the narrative today from the amputees is Sierra Leoneans wake up. President Madabio, wake up. Um, government of Sierra Leone, wake up. Citizens of Sierra Leone, wake up to the amputees. They are our brothers and sisters. Let us be our brothers and sisters keeper. And they ask, say, this not to pauper, this not to by force. From the humanitarian president, Madabio, you don't go now the UN. You don't talk about say you they work with disabilities. Yet you, your government has done nothing for the war amputees. Please let us not continue to live in a charade, because when uh, very soon this year we are going to the international human rights and bringing this to the court because the TRC has not been upheld. Everything where the Human Rights Treaty talk about has not been upheld. Everything where you go to UN every year for say we're doing this, we're doing that. Um, um, Other people with disability groups are being helped, polio, the blind and other people. But what about the war amputees? Are they not people with disabilities? So my appeal is that may we stop for torn we eye. Until we take care of we people, we're not going to see the blessing we for coming as alone. Now, a cost we they put on we nation, where we they forget them people here. We pay the biggest price. President Madabio, if you ever sit on that seat today, today now they amputee, they wouldn't cut their hand. And you know, because you were in the regime when war started, you were in government when the war started in 1991. So I would really be a hope say in your government, you before don't do a turnaround, a full circle, and help the war amputees there be also. Um, you know, from 1991, last year, now how many years? 30 years don't pass. This year, January 18 go mark 20 years with the war done done. 20 years, it may be over for the president of Sierra Leone. Because I remember you say, let's change the um, um, narrative when Iris Elba come. There's a recording of you saying, let's change the narrative about the war. Let's change the narrative about blood diamonds. How can the narrative be changed when you and your government are not doing anything for them? The narrative can only be changed when you sit up, you do your work as a president, and take care of your citizens them. And you don't promise. You made a public promise so you will take care of people with disabilities, except if your government, they do institutional discrimination. And I say this with the deepest respect, the dis- because the Bible say, for make we honor, we lead as them. But the Bible also say in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 31, it say make we speak for the voiceless, make we arise and talk for the one that we they don't forget. And that is what I am doing. And I say it without fear, without partiality, I'm from a, a political group. I am not into politics. I'm speaking from a humanitarian and a patriotic stance. Let the government of Sierra Leone do what they're receiving the funds to do. Take care of the war survivors. We don't lose amputees them. When our government go get for pay a price, where we go to judgment day, God is going to ask and ask we forgive account of what when you were placed in an authority, what have you done? Did you take care of the poor or did you turn a blind eye and lined up your pockets instead of you take care of the people there? Where they're angry, you they take care of them. Where they're hungry, where they're thirsty, where they're naked, where they're homeless. We get buckle amputees there, we're homeless, we live on the streets. What are we doing? Only a handful of Sierra Leoneans in the UK 
and in the diaspora, very remnants out of Sierra Leoneans, less than 1% of the nation, they support amputees them or help or support we. I know they say Una can't support Melkosh. Take a, take, put them as a mandate that Una go arise in this 20th year. And they challenge the government of Sierra Leone, do the right thing. So that's my message. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, welcome to this interview. Your name is Oda Chibi. Uh, my name is Abba Sisi. Uh, I'm mean, uh, um, a person with disability that was um, affected during the war we had in Sierra Leone. Yeah, I graduated as well and um, from Fabi College. I studied um, social work. And I'm the um, Youth Ambassador for Melkosh Mission International. Yeah. And as we see on the NIASO until the January 6th, and also viewers go once for no waiting at the purpose today for Mekuna Gadanaya. Well, we they are today for commemorate the day we um, to celebrate generally the, the, the event will be up on us alone. The, though it was terrible, and it's the idea where they bring out some old memories and and um, f just because of it and how we as people can just want to relate with each other and say that we, um, we are moving on to something better or, or to be hopeful for. So we just decided to celebrate this day here. And um, also in a medical mission, we are in Melkosh, they support war wounded victims. We are in the, the medical support to help them with their health and, uh, and the way of living too. Yeah. And we get understanding, say you do a short um, video. Viewers go on for no, I go on for me. You tell viewers them are waiting that video they are about. Well, and basically they speak on um, the effects of the war on every Sierra Leonean way, um, like way be really, really get affected. Me as one person, I use my story as a background to the play because I feel like if I can tell out my story and the people see it, they realize that, okay, this is how these people are living and how they are feeling. So if they try to see that we're, we're trying to make some strides in growing in the society or trying to move to a better position, they should just see us as heroes rather than cowards or, or the way they feel about us in general. So it's all about, it's all about telling them how we feel and also changing the, the narratives or the stereotypes that have been going on for, for decades now. Okay, and when you talk about the stereotypes and also you make men just say, um, you're not graduate, um, uh, viewers go on for no, are you don't they cope? Well, it has really not been easy. Like, it, going to university can be um, a better sweet experience for people like us. But the worst part is, I mean, you don't have to do things normal like others. If you want to achieve or be successful in your academics, you have to go beyond the normal uh, um, rate of anybody's work that they can do. You have to double work yourself, like exceed expectations to prove that, yes, I can do it. If these people can do it, I too can do it. So it has really not been um, something way easy. But I thank God that I'll be able to persevere, thrive through, even without limited or less support. Um, I mean, it's just me being grateful to God and also for me not being, um, not, not being despaired by waiting to happen around me or during the years there. Yeah. And you say you're not a youth ambassador and um, viewers go want for no. What's not the work where you they do right now? Well, I basically they give out voice for people like us, like the population we are representing in Sierra Leone. Um, as a youth ambassador, it not my responsibility for give out voice out there, speak on issues where they affect we. And also, time to time, reach out to people that um, are involved and during the war, we not be a victim. I, I'm also responsible like to talk to them, give them directions as to when they want to in academics, in their academics or whatever capacity they may want to find themselves. If they want, like I'm there to talk to them. Plus also, I also work with um, the the uh, the founder of the organization who usually come to do these um, missions, school mission support and the medical support. I also. I've been there with her trying to make sure that things are done in the right way. So, yeah, that is pretty much what I do. As most of the time, we can see people with amputee, they are there at the big or do another thing. So, like, I'm waiting at a message where you go one for ad, like a, a message where you go send to them concerning um, the situation, how they're supposed to live their life. Well, one thing is, um, it's the, the word, it takes bravery to beg. It's real, like 
me as an individual for that I go out and big people especially there are times when i need things to be done and they are not done like we all need somebody to depend on so me asking even trying to ask now something very difficult for me so i can imagine or i can't even imagine the 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 the, the, the pain or the burden within they carry in their hearts like for go out there and beg people and they're doing it in the national level where in people everybody they see them and the humility the, the humiliation with it they go through i feel like it's something they don't deserve but they should not give in to that you know i just believe say we all get a, a role for playing this in this world if only you look at yourself and determine and realize that i want to do this and i can do it just put yourself into practice into perspective of what you want and trust me there are no limitations to life just 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 no no not tend to be given to waiting society they throw at you right now or anything whether they tell you that you any any position where society don't put you just don't give it to in don't give in to it i mean just Try to be yourself and work for a better you than what you don't position yourself for be right now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you so. Hello, welcome to this interview. Your name and who that you be? Maya Tukamara. Okay. okay, so I'm um, going to make you tell viewers them as today na January 6 and we see on the new thing na ya so I'm um, going to let you tell viewers waiting at the purpose on the day for today. Well, um, first of all, you know, my name is Kamara, and uh, as soon as I can see, me na double up in tea during the war in uh, here in uh, 2000. Um, well, 1999, actually, I was one of the the little children that was uh, captured by the rebels, and uh, my hands were, you know, amputated and. Uh, I was in the camp, in the Apinti camp, for several years. And then after that, I was adopted by a Canadian family. And then I was taken to, to Canada uh, in 2003. So I have been there since then. Pretty much that's where I grew up. And um, But I'm here today because uh, some of my... Um, my RPNC friends are having a program here, and I was fortunate to be here. And so um, I was invited to be part of the program, which I'm so um, happy about. And uh, so that's the reason why I'm here today. Okay. So now let me talk about the education background as you go up in Canada. So um, how um, things, how situation may look like for you? in Canada? Well, um, talking about education, I didn't know, um, I didn't go to school here. As I said, I left here at the age of what, 11 or 12. And so I didn't, I didn't go to school here because I was born in a very poor family and uh, they couldn't afford to send me to school back then. And so I never knew what the education was until I went to Canada. When I went there, I had to start from scratch. And um, I started school at the age of 14 um, there. And so it was a struggle for me because that was the first time for me to go into school, uh, schooling system. So it wasn't easy, but I had the determination that I was, you know, I wanted to learn. I wanted to go to school and uh, have a little bit of education. And so I was, I was able to go and uh, finish um, my education, you know, level, whatever level I could, I could reach. And, uh, but it was, it was very challenging. Very, very challenging. But, you know, it's way better than here, of course, because I didn't have to pay nothing to go to school. All I had to do is give my efforts. And, uh, yeah, but it was... Uh, and today, I, I feel blessed. I feel blessed that I was able to get the opportunity, given the opportunity to go there and, uh, you know, go to school. And, you know, now... I am who I am because of that opportunity that I was given to go to Canada and uh, receive the little education that I have today. Okay. 
And today we see um, the organization, Wena Melquish organization, they come give out a medical support to um, some war wounded and amputees. Um, now we, Yusef, don't be part of this um, um, particular gathering. What is the message we you go say now there? As plenty people can look at certain um, appetites them in a way that we then say most of the time can say, well, now that's make we they go for go big. So what is the message where you go send out there to the society and also what is the message where you go send out there to the appetites them? Well, uh, first of all, I, I just want to say uh, plenty thanks to the the organization that took uh, the took charge on this program this um you know for giving these people the opportunity to be able to see themselves again as humans because as it is it's not hiding or hidden or everybody can see it I was there, I was in the camp with them. I knew the struggle that we went through and I knew how we, were we have been treated before. And I'm sure, I believe that my colleagues here, they're still going, undergoing that, um, through that treatment, right? Um, meaning the necklace that they, they have been going through because just uh, just now they were just giving me some information about how they have been treated and uh, there were a program set up by the government which they call it social social nets social nets uh, support for the vulnerable people which I believe it's included it's included the appointees and if you're talking about vulnerable people those are the people that as a government should always should always look after first or talk about first but in my own experience that have never happened i've never heard a government person standing up there doing any interview or any campaign or anything that that is concerning this country they mentioned the appointees. So it's like they're just kind of like abandoning us because of what, what happened. But we didn't ask for this. Our people did not ask for it. Some of us were children. We didn't know where war uh, started, how it started, and where it came from. But today, we are the one that is uh, enduring the, the, the pain of it. The governments, it's not just this recent governments, it's from the past governments. They have been neglecting these people since day one. You know, and that's for me, it's very painful because I know what I went through. I used to go to, to the city of Freetown begging every single day of my life until I, I left this country. I knew what I went through. And seeing my friends still going through that, you know, that trend, for me, it's like, you know, they're still just like, they're taking a knife and starving, uh, uh, putting it through our hearts. And it's not fair. So, all I have to say to the appointees is that, I mean, we're already in this. There's no going back. If there's something we can do to change the past, we could have done it, but there's nothing we can do to change the past. So we just have to accept ourselves and, uh, and who we are and how the society looked at us today, or uh, looking at us today. Because the society, and I will say this loudly to everybody or to any uh, social media, they're looking at us like we are lesser humans. Today, if the government of Sierra Leone, they have the chance to get rid of all the appointees of this country, I'm telling you, they will do that. And let them come and ask me, why did I say that? I will explain to them why I said that. Because I knew, I know what I went through and what my people are still going through. But also, I'm still pleading to those people out there. You know, in life, we go through a lot. And things happen in life. You never know 
what's going to happen to you? Today you might be healthy, tomorrow you'll be ill. Today you might be alive, tomorrow you'll be dead. So, you know, so they should not look at everybody like a, a trash. You know, so I, I don't know. I have a lot to say, but I can, I'll just stop here for now. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Hello, welcome to the interview. Your name and who that you be? Me name is Mohamed Ba, Vice President, Amputee and World Wounded Association. And today we know saying on January 6th. I'm you know, mindful of tell viewers small history about yourself. Thank you very much. We're happy. On a day, yeah, today, today on January 6th, but it's sad day for we because during that 10 day, now most of we fall short. We during the war we began at this country, now we fall short. Some of we we lost we foot them, so we call it a lost their hand them. As soon as I don't see most of our colleagues the way they are today. We're not really happy because no not you know the way we, we they at least as a disabled people them, we at least we go member back. So this is a very very sad news for we most of our colleagues they don't die. As soon as Yeri, what in the other speaker then tell una and most of our colleagues right now they sick so they are sick better able for come for do all that thing day. And for we this January 6th, we thank God for the life because we don't day now, we day, but most of our colleagues they don't die. So we they appeal to so hard people. Eh? Let them see how best for help disabled people in this country, more especially in a salon. Because we salon are yeah, not in other way, at least this government, they pay attention to we for help we. So we may appeal to them. Because if now work if not talk, we don't talk. One for appeal to salon government. More especially to President Madabio, we want for appeal to Ram. And that part, you know what happened at this country? Effects the war at this country. Now, if it's such thing don't happen so as a war victim, then nothing we will forget. I don't know who's that we head for. So we want to appeal to Randria, let it turn face to the war victim then. Look, we call it the way they are like a today, my sister. It really it's really sad happening. You know, she not take all that day, day, no nothing. Pass the the other people them we come for patronize to be. Let government back, let them step in. This is now one old national day where them for do something, but then they do nothing. They just left with so no more to we and we safe, and uh, let them not forget say all who say we call it and go, we all go for good. But things are not easy for the war victims at this country. Okay. And also, we see Melquish um, gather on Anayaso today for um, medical support. So, um, what do you think about that? Melquish, Mama, they know they helped me for quite a long time. If you don't know them like safe today, like they have been sad day for we. But we thank God with Melquish's mission, they know they do a lot. And Melkos, they even the counts on other people them for see how best for help the stakeholders and the amputees them, the war victims in this country. Let God bless them. We the pray say, let God continue for help them more and more, more pastor faith. We don't, instead of don't turn family as war victims in this country. We the pray for them. But things not really easy for the war victims them. So like I'm waiting at the message where you go at so all which you don't say. So as we see most of the time we can say amputees them can they out there then they big. So I'm waiting at the message where they send out there to the the public concerning their perception about the amputees. Fine. My own message where they send as a vice president for the one whole country. My own message are they send this message to my colleagues Sierra Leoneans. Where they out and salon. Do ya let them see how best. Yes, world on done. That is fact, world on done. But let them see how best for help the war victims in this country. Me want to appeal to them. A lot of people in the street and the big. And we as an organization, we don't embark in we don't embark in agriculture for see how best for remove company in the street. But there is no help back we know they get. Presently we they do farm na Putloko, we they do another farm na Pujom. My sister, now we own money self what we get. Now we they use for do that day. So we ask, me they ask to be colleagues, and also they appeal to the government of this country, Salon, to President Madabio, the minister, they let them open some do more for we. A lot of help they come, but we, the war victims in this country, we don't get at all. We want to appeal to them, do ya? Let them turn face to war victims, let them say we say they suffer. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma. As now don't listen to within the founder of Melkosh Mission International, talk about the amputees them as he say it will work with over 
5,000 appetites them all over the country and also talk about the reason we make it decide for take up this responsibility for provide for the appetites and one wounded them and also we talk to people them with disability waiting yeah. SF tell we about this day today when are January 6 as now a memorable day to everybody in a salon but the war wounded and the amputees them then self talk about the way how they feel where they get for remember them past today me now I start to smile say until we meet again I say tata -ta.